Greek philosopher Herodotus tells us about a special kind of water found in the land of Macrobians. A man visiting the land of Macrobians asked their king about their life, about their diet, but he was amazed to find one thing. Most of the people in the land of Macrobia were over 120 years old. So he asked the king, what was his secret? So the king took him to a fountain. He describes the fountain as the water of the fountain was glossy and sleek. It was so light that nothing can float in it. That fountain is what we call the fountain of youth. Thousands of men have spent their entire lives searching for that fountain. And the main reason for that is that we are never satisfied with how long we are going to live. Living for 100 years was considered amazing until we found out about the space travel and realized how insignificant was our time in this world. It would take us hundreds or thousands of years for us to reach the solar systems next to our own and we can barely cross our own in our lifetimes. We have been working on extending our lifespan for thousands of years from people searching for the mythical fountains to the kings experimenting with mercury. But the most practical and viable solution lies in cryosleep and torpor. About 2000 years ago, an injured soldier came to Hippocrates for treatment. Hippocrates running out of the options, he covered the injuries with ice or snow to slow the flow of the blood and gave it time to heal. This could be considered the very foundations of cryosleep where it all started. Hey everyone, this is TyroScience, simplified science to make you smarter. Cryosleep is a process in which a person is put into a state of suspended animation using a drug or very cold chamber. Surely you have seen it in a lot of movies like Interstellar or Avatar. Though cryosleep is not an actual term, just something invented by the movies. The scientific term usually agreed upon is suspended animation. Doctors have long been experimenting with something called therapeutic hypothermia, where the body temperature is cooled down so they can treat the patients. They had a limited success with that. But then something happened that changed the entire perspective and gave a new solution to the entire problem. A Swedish radiologist called Anna Bagenholm was trapped under ice for 80 minutes. Her heart stopped for 3 hours and her core temperature dropped to 50 degrees. She was revived and made a full recovery. In 2006, a Japanese man called Mitsutaka Uchikoshi survived for 24 days without food and water after his body went into a hypothermic state. These and few other cases made us realize that suspended animation is indeed possible. We just need to figure out how. Finally, space agencies like NASA stepped in and started taking this seriously due to its amazing potential in space travel. It is suggested that if astronauts can be put into suspended animation, the weight of space shuttle can be cut into half. Since 2000, thousands of patients were subjected to therapeutic hypothermia with a limited success, with a maximum duration of 72 hours. Single cells and few other body parts can be put on the ice and restored back. But brain? Well, brain is a bit more complicated. And that is the area we are not successful yet. But does that mean it was a failure? Well, absolutely not. It just meant we needed to look in some other direction. And indeed, we found one. This method is so successful that we might be using it in next Mars mission. So what did we change and why are we so sure of it? Well again the answer was in nature and it was there for a long long time. It was a process called torpor or what we commonly called hibernation. Just as a frog goes into hibernation, humans can go into hibernation and come back as if nothing happened. So what's the difference? Why was cooling of the body not successful but torpor was? Well the thing is, in therapeutic hypothermia, the body is cooled from outside 
but in topo the body cools itself so topo can give almost all benefits of cryo sleep like slower heart rate lower metabolism etc but there's also another surprising benefit somehow a hibernating organism is not that much affected by radiation though we still don't know why hibernation is different from sleep in fact if you need to sleep in a hibernating state you have to wake up first humans are not naturally designed for hibernation so a special process is being developed to help with that in fact trials with other animals which do not hibernate naturally has shown pretty good results the topo would be initiated by injecting a drug into the subject in a pressurized chamber the sensors will be attached to the body to monitor the vitals the subject will receive all the nutrition directly injected into its body in a liquid state the liquid will contain all the nutrients necessary for human body and finally a catheter will be inserted to drain out all the waste the initial idea is to induce topo for 14 days at a time the exact drug and equipment is still under design but according to a 2014 nasa report they found no show stoppers in the process the main question is can it enable people to live for 100 to 200 to 300 years well hibernation definitely slows down the aging but it does not slow down aging that much so its application is limited to saving resources on space shuttles enabling more crew members to travel the same is not true for cryo sleep in fact it can extend the lifespan beyond our imagination but this process will take a little longer as we need to remove the side effects and figure out how to successfully revive the brain without damage after cryo sleep and maybe then we can have people celebrating their 1000th birthday please hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this don't forget to like comment and share and as always keep learning keep exploring until you know everything